Today, I'll be talking on human skeleton. Well, when we speak of the term skeleton, it simply means the framework. So skeleton, when we say, it is not necessary that it will mean only the bony framework. So when we talk of the skeleton of a house, or the skeleton of a building, or the skeleton of a vehicle. So it means simply the framework. So then, when we talk of skeleton of a living organism, a living being, it means the framework of that particular living organism. Say as for example, insects, they have also skeleton, but their skeleton is not the bone, but the carpus. Likewise, when we say skeleton for human being or man, we may broadly divide skeleton into two. One, the skeleton or the bony parts or the bones lying inside our body, embedded inside the tissue or muscles. And that constitute what we call endoskeleton, skeleton inside the body. And on the other hand, human beings also has exoskeleton, skeleton outside the body, which are visible, which actually are not bones. Say as for example, our nails, our teeth, they constitute exoskeleton, skeleton outside the body. But generally, when we talk of skeleton, we refer to endoskeleton. Well, following the general pattern, human skeleton consists of altogether 200 I will speak of endoskeleton as skeleton, not out. So the skeleton, broadly we can divide it into two parts. One is axial part and the other part is appendicular part. The axial part or axial skeleton constitute the bones of skull, then bones of thorax, that is the ribs, sternum, and vertebral column. So this axial part or axial section or axial part of the skeleton all together has 80 bones. So, so out of 80, out sorry, out of 206, 80 are axial bones and remaining 126 bones constitute our appendicular bones. So, appendicular bones are bones of our limbs, that is four limbs, our arms and hands that constitute four limbs and hind limbs it constitute leg and foot and when we say four limb it also has a part specific part which girdles with the thorax and that is called pectoral girdle and our hind limb that means leg it is again girdle with the abdomen now let us see what are the main functions of skeleton that means endoskeleton so one of the most important function of 
endoskeleton is to support so parts of our body. So without a framework, without a structure, the soft part cannot stand on its own. So it needs a support. So that is why it supports the soft part. And again, we can move, we can walk, we can extend our legs, we can extend our hands. That means the movement is made possible because of the bones, the skeleton. Then at the same time, it also protects delicate organs of our body, the heart, lungs, kidneys, they are protected by our ribs. Then again, at the same time, it helps in storing minerals, particularly calcium, then phosphorus, potassium and magnesium. So it is bone which stores such minerals which are basic nutrients of our body, which are very much essential for our body. And at the same time, bone plays a very, very important role, particularly in making new blood cells. So new blood cells are formed from the bone marrow. So that is why the structure, the endoskeleton, the bones are very, very necessary for our body. Then most of the bones are linked at movable joints to make system flexible. Our body is flexible because at certain points they are linked with through joints. Then again at the same time it anchors points for muscle producing or body movement. Bones also anchors. Muscles are fastened in certain parts of the bone, certain points of the bone which makes our body move. Now, we will come to the different parts of the axial and appendicular bones. Now, let us come to axial part first of all. Axial part is constituted by skull, vertebral column, ribs and sternum. All together 80 bones. So this is a skull. So this skull all together has 22 bones. So this out of these 22 bones, only one is movable or rather articulary. It can articulate. So 21 bones are fused together and only one that is mandible or lower jaw, it can move. Others are all fused together. This is frontal bone, forehead, the parietal bone, this is right parietal bone, this is left parietal bone, this is occipital bone, the back part of the occipital bone where we have one foramen through which the brain connects with the spinal cord. Then this is mandible, this is zygomatic bone, this is maxilla, like that. There are all together 22 bones. So out of these 22 bones, eye bones are in the cranium part and other 14 bones are on the facial part. So this 14 bone includes the movable mandible also. So 14 in the frontal part or in the facial part and 8 in the cranium part constitute all together 22 bones of the skull. Now let us come to the next axial bone that is vertebral column. This is the vertebral column or commonly what we call spine. So this vertebral column 
all together has 33 bones. 33 bones constitute vertebral column. And out of these 33 bones, 7 are in the neck region. 7 vertebra are in the neck region. And we call this vertebra as cervical vertebra. And in the thoracic region, there are 12 vertebra in the thoracic region. And below thoracic region, there is lumbar region. And lumbar region has five vertebra then after that we have sacrum so sacrum this is sacrum this has all together nine bones fused together so this has again two part one is sacral part having five bones fused together and again coccyx four bones fused together fused with again sacral part and forming nine bones together. So this sacral plus coccyx together constitute sacrum and it has nine fused bones. So nine here and other 24 in other parts of the vertebral column constitute 33 bones of vertebral column. Then we have ribs ribs constitute all together 24 bones so it occurs in pairs and forms our rib cage so in short a rib cage has all together 24 bones or 12 pairs of ribs so out of these 12 pairs of ribs 7 pairs are called true ribs because they are isolated from other ribs and it articulates with sternum. These true ribs are seven in pair starting from ribs one to seven pair. First pair to seven pair constitute true ribs. Then we have false ribs. False ribs are again those ribs which bifurcates and forms ribs and they are three in pairs so that means six ribs then we have last two pairs and they are called floating pairs because they on one end it articulates with vertebral column but on the other hand it is not at all articulated with sternum it's completely floating so these two pairs that means four bones constitute floating ribs. So all together there are 24 ribs and these 24 ribs forms our rib case which protects the delicate organs like heart, lungs of our body. Then we have another bone sternum. This is sternum. This is the sternum. It is in front of our chest and it is with this sternum that ribs articulate. Ribs are joined here at these articular surfaces. So 22 bones of skull, 33 bones of vertebral column, 24 bones or 24 ribs and one sternum all together constitute 80 bones of axial part of our endoskeleton. Now let us come to appendicular part. As I have told you, when we say appendicular part or appendicular skeleton, we mean the bones of our limbs, the fore limbs and hind limbs. So when we say upper extremity, it includes shoulder girdle or scientifically termed as pectoral girdle and it has two bones on one side. So that means left pectoral girdle has two bones. Those two bones are one is scapula. This is called scapula. This triangular shaft bone which is 
located on the back side of our shoulder and along with it there is another clavicle f shaft bone elongated bone this is clavicle so this clavicle and scapula together is called shoulder girdle or pectoral girdle so there are two such pectoral girdle one on the left another on the right so that means together there are four bones then after pectoral girdle let's come down to the upper arm of our body so this upper arm this section of the bone is the bone of upper arm and this is called humerus so there are two humerus one on the left arm upper arm another on the right upper arm when we say arm we mean the upper arm as well as lower arm so we should clearly spell out upper arm and lower arm distal to humerus we have two bones two bones these two bones constitute our forearm so forearms has two bone one is radius one is radius this smaller shorter one is radius the shorter one is radius and this one is ulna so this radius and ulna or jointly known as radio ulna forms our bone of forearm so two bones on one forearm so for two forearm we have four bones then we have bones of our hand there are all together eight wrist bones it forms the wrist and these are called carpus so we have eight carpus bone on one hand then we have metacarpal so we have five metacarpals five metacarpals on one hand another five metacarpals on another hand then we have phalanges then so the thumb has only two phalanges other fingers have three three phalanges so all together 14 phalanges 14 phalanges 5 metacarpal then carpus 8 carpus all together has 27 bones in one hand so we have two hands so that means 27 into 2 it comes to 54 so 54 bones in two hands plus arms bones together which constitute 10 bones so 54 for hands and 10 for arms we have 64 bones in our upper extremity now let us come down to lower limbs when we say lower limb it is constituted by two pelvic bones together with chakram but we have counted chakram as axial bone now therefore for the lower limb we have one pelvis on each side of the limb so together two pelvis then we have two femur two thigh so we have two thigh bones so two femur bones then just below femur we have one knee calf scientifically termed as patella so we have two patella two knee calves then again below this knee calf we have two bones one is tibia another smaller one fibula so tibia and fibula constitute bones of lower leg so below the lower leg the most 
proximal part of our lower limb is foot. So this foot has all together 26 bones. One foot has 26 bones. So the heel bone, the calcaneum bone, then just below the tibia there is talus. Talus bone is just below the tibia, then heel bone, calcaneum. Then we have other tarsal, five tarsal bones, five tarsal bones, so seven. Then we have five metatarsal and other 14 phalanges. So all together constitute 26 bones. So one foot has 26 bones. So two feet means we have 52 bones. So 52 bones with the bones of patella, pelvis, upper leg and lower leg constitute all together 62 bones. So 62 in hind limb, 64 in fore limbs, it constitute all together 126 bones. So 126 bones frame our appendicular bone. So 126 bones of appendicular part plus 80 bones of axial part together constitute the human skeleton comprising of 206 bones. Finally come to types of bone, general types of bone. There are different types of bone. One is long bone. So this is an example of a long bone. Long bone means those bones having two extremities or if we follow the scientific term two epiphyses and one diaphysis two epiphyses and one diaphysis then then is two ends and one shaft so those bones are called long bones now let us come to short bones so Short bones are spongy bones, usually boxy type or like a shape of a cube. Here, here these bones of this ankle, tarsal bones, these are cubic type, short. So, these type of bones are called short bones. Then we have another type of bone that is schismoid bone. So these are usually have a shaft resembling that of a seat. So seat shaft bones are known as schismoid bone. So this patella, knee calf, you see, you can just see just like a sit. So this sit set bones, they are usually called sismoid bone. Then we have flat bones. Flat bones are those bones having flat surfaces, usually flat, or maybe completely flat, or even there may be curvature but flat. This is slightly curved, but this is having a flat surface. So such bones having a flat surface, even though the outline is little bit curved, then that is called flat bone. Now let us come to irregular bones, another type of bone that is irregular bones. All those bones which are not covered 
under what I have described. As yes, for example, this this one. Can we describe it by what you say? Saying any self, it has no specific self. This vertebra. Similarly, this vertebra, it has no specific self. So such bones are called irregular bones. These are some of the fundamental concepts that we should try to understand while studying human skeleton.